You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show, where we talk all about the latest model updates in Azure Form Recognizer with my friend Vinod Kripad. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show, where we're talking all about the latest model updates in Azure Form Recognizer with my friend Vinod Kripad. Vinod, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Seth. How are you? Fantastic. So for those who do not know you, could you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Vinod Kurpat. I'm a product manager on the Azure uh, Applied AI team working on Form Recognizer. Fantastic. So for those that don't know what Azure Form Recognizer is, can you give us the deets? Yes, thank you. So Form Recognizer is a uh, Applied AI service intended for your document understanding solutions. So customers that have a lot of document processing workflows typically you know, run through some, some amount of document automation uh, where they have to extract values from documents and then process those in a downstream application. And that's essentially the, the core purpose of what Form Recognizer does. It helps you extract values from your documents and then use those extracted values in your downstream application processing needs. That's fantastic. So from paper basically into structured computer stuff. Exactly. So so it's a combination of a, two different things. It's a, it's a combination of obviously extracting text from paper, but also extracting structure and inferring structure from, from documents and then using that structure to then define what is your, your downstream application, that, that how, how it can consume that information. That's amazing. And it works with any kind of documents. I mean, can you give us a sense for what kind of documents it can work with? Yeah, so Swarm Recognizer can work with any types of document, right? You have essentially three three categories of models that we have. Uh, the first is read, which is essentially OCR, so it extracts content from documents. So we typically work with PDF files, TIFF images, PNGs, um, and read can now even work with Office documents in, in preview. So there are a certain amount of uh, customers that need just content extraction, and read is, is a perfect solution for them. For customers that actually need a little bit more, so we have uh, another set of APIs that are general document APIs or document type agnostic APIs. And these typically are layout as well as the general document model. And layout and the general document model extract both text as well as structure. So structure could be things like tables uh, or it could be selection marks. Those are just examples of structure that, that you can extract out of the, the document with layout. The general document model includes key value pairs, which is essentially uh, think of it as uh, any key value pair within a document. So you might have a form that has first name and last name. Uh, so you, you you extract those as as key value pairs, and this can work with any form, any document. It's it just works out of the box without any training required. That's pretty cool. Now here's a here's a question, and I, I did I wasn't sure of this, but does it work with like if someone like hand wrote on a form, does that work too? Absolutely, we can do handwritten text recognition as well. And uh, you know, handwritten text comes out as as text extracted, but we also recognize that it is handwritten text, and we give you a little bit of a of a clue that it's handwritten text through the uh, the, the styles output. So so you can go look for text that you know is handwritten by looking for for the output of the API that has a style of handwritten text. This is this is amazing stuff. Obviously, if you haven't heard of it, you should go take a look at it. But now let's talk about the new new stuff. What's new? in Azure Form Recognizer. All right, there's obviously a lot to talk about here because there's there's a lot of new stuff in Azure Form Recognizer. So we'll start with document classification, right? A common challenge when dealing with a lot of different documents uh, is the fact that you need to understand which type of document you're dealing with before you can process it effectively downstream. And so in the past, we've had a, a capability called Model Compose, which allowed you to compose different models together and then when you submitted a document for analysis to Model Compose, it would pick the right underlying model to use to extract the values. We're now coming out with a new document classification API that allows you to train a classifier uh, that, that can then disambiguate between the different types of documents you're working with. I, that's really cool because, I mean, I was thinking of, okay, I'll give it all my one forms and then it'll process, and then I'll yeah. give it all my other forms and then it process. Now you're saying you can just give it forms and it will disambiguate between the different types and then do that other processing read layout and key value pairs oh yeah yeah it, it can do that but I'll, I'll give you one one more step right so it does Ooh. one more thing which is essentially splitting a document right uh so i'm going to purposely choose to use two different uh words here i'm going to use a file which would sort of de denote a file right so think of a scenario where you might want to do a loan application, right? So your loan processor asks you to say, hey, Seth, go ahead and upload your, uh, maybe a copy of your bank statement, a copy of your recent 
2 and a, a loan application form filled out, right? You scan these things, upload it, it goes in as a single file, but it's actually a combination of three separate documents. And so with the new classification API, we can identify what are the different classes of documents contained within a single file and give you those page ranges. So then you can process them appropriately as needed as well. Oh, I see. So it's even more than just like sorting through papers. It's sorting through a single quote unquote document that I've scanned in and it's able to separate and disambiguate even in the same file. Exactly. Right. So, so it's, it's taking a single file and then chunking that up into individual documents. That's awesome. Any other new things? Because I feel like I want to, I want to see this stuff in action. Oh yeah. So, so we're only getting started with this, right? So, so the other new things that we want to talk about is, uh, what we're doing with uh, OpenAI and using OpenAI's models uh, as a, a, with Azure OpenAI, we're now got a zero shot extraction capability called query fields. So you can, so there are scenarios, for example, the general document model extracts key value pairs, right? Um, and you might find yourself in a scenario where it extracts 90% of the things that you need, but there's these two or three other fields that are really core to your business that maybe uh, the model doesn't really extract. Uh, so you can use the query fields feature to give the model a hint and say, hey, I'm really interested in this particular uh, value that, that should be presented in these documents. Can you find that for me? And that's what the query fields does. So it's, it, it's, it takes a hint from you in terms of what the field is that you might be looking for and then uses OpenAI's technologies uh, be, behind the scenes to then extract the right field for you and present that back to you. That's a, That's like a new way of doing like fuzzy search for the most important thing on a page. Because then, like, if you pull all the text out, all the text is not useful. OCR is great, but it's not great for disambiguating information. You're saying now you can give it hints on, I want this kind of information, and then it can give you that in return as well. Absolutely. I love the fact that you called it fuzzy search for documents. This is this is amazing. So so I, I, I probably have to use that next time. I talk mm, to see, I'm, this is why I make the medium to small dollars. Any other cool things <laughs> before we go to the demo? Oh yeah, there's absolutely there's there's a lot more. I can I can I can I can talk to you about uh, new pre-built models. We've got a new pre-built model for a 1098 form, which is you know we're all heading up into tax season absolutely. now, so there's there's things that that you need to to worry about. Uh, the 1098 form has a few different variants. There's a 1098 mortgage form. There's 1098 student loan. There's 1098 uh, uh, for uh, you know for tuition and loan payments and things like that. So, so there's a couple of different variations of the 1098 form that are all supported. Uh, in addition to that, we have a lot more updates in terms of like uh, model quality improvements, uh, language coverage, uh, custom neural models, for example. Uh, we've now included uh, a, a number of Latin languages. So that would be German, Dutch, Italian, French, and Spanish uh, as, as languages that you can train documents with for custom neural models. There's signature detection improvements in custom template models. Uh, there's uh, AI quality improvements across the board, both in uh, layout in terms of uh, the, the table extraction, as well as OCR improvements for like single character digits. So there's a ton of things I can, I can talk about, but maybe we stop there. And I'll, I'll it let you feels ask like what you're telling me, Vinod, is you should come on more often because it feels like there's a backlog of good stuff. All right, can we jump in and see some of these things in action? Absolutely, let's do that. So so I'll start with a quick demo. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe walk you through some of the, the updates as we go along, right? Okay, um, so the first place I'll, I'll point you to is the Form Recognizer Studio. Obviously, this is where you want to go to experience the best and greatest of Form Recognizer. Um, the things that I'll, I'll call out as you're doing this is uh, you, when you go into Form Recognizer for the first time, if you've never really used the tool before, uh, go ahead and create a, a resource in the Azure portal and then go ahead and set up that resource for you to use in the Form Recognizer Studio. Once you have that done, uh, I'll start maybe with, with the document classification capability. Uh, if for, for, for people who've seen the Form Recognizer Studio before and used it before, you've seen uh, sort of the custom model section. You'll notice now that, that we have two tiles here. There's the custom classification models as well. So we'll start with a quick demo on how you train a custom classification model, right? And my goal is to show you how you can do this in, in uh, two clicks or less once you get to the, the point where you know, you've got your data that you're playing with. This is right? awesome. Can you control plus for me to make this the screen a little bit bigger? Oh, sure. Yeah. How's that? Nice. Perfect. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and go ahead and uh, set up a new new project uh, to start with. We'll just call uh, call this the AI Show project, uh, um, and I have to learn how to spell better. Um, then you and me both, my friend. 
the next thing we'll do is we need to select a, a resource we're, we're working with. So in this case, I'm going to select a resource that I've already provisioned. Uh, and the, the thing to, to remember here is uh, all of these resources are need to be in um, um, the uh, in a in a few different regions, right? And I'll, I'll I'll talk to you a little bit about that as we go along because uh, within our with, with our current preview, we've only got the preview available for use in three specific regions, which is uh, West US two, East East US, and West Europe. Uh, so as long as you provision a resource in one of these three regions, you should be able to use most of the preview features. The OpenAI integration that I just talked about is only available in East US. So, so just just be aware that that is one of the the limitations of, of what you need to to remember. Got it. Um, so again, I'll, I'll go through this. Uh, at this point, I'm really just selecting both my form recognizer resource that I want to use, uh, as well as the um, uh, uh, you know the storage account that, that has my data. So, so what you're doing here, is, if, let me, if I may, if what you're yeah. doing here is you're creating a custom classification model for documents. Is that right? That is correct, right? So, uh, so what I've done so far is I've just uploaded a bunch of documents into a storage account, uh, and uh, I've organized these documents by folders, right? And so you'll see that uh, the first time you come in here, um, uh, it, the the model will ask you if you want to use uh, your your uh, the the model the 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 studio asks you if you want to use your folders as labels, right? And unfortunately, since I've already done this before, uh, it it hasn't asked me that question, but it's actually pre-labeled these documents for me. But if you had just clicked on yes when when it asks you if you want to use your folders as labels, it goes ahead and, and labels all these documents for you. So you can see each of these documents has been labeled. There's a few contracts in here. There's a few POs in here. There's a few uh, statement to work, and there's some trade confirmations. These are just examples of some document types that that I, I chose to use for for this demo. That's cool. Uh, once I go ahead and hit train, you'll find that I can uh, I can call this the AI show model. Uh, and once I once I hit train, uh, it takes about a minute or so to train. Uh, while that uh, while that model is training, I already have a train model over here that I can I can go ahead and, and show you how how this might work, right? So I'm going to do a, a, I'm going to test this with a file. And I, what I've done is I've, I've created a file uh, that uh, that has a, a few different uh, sort of documents contained within it, right? So you'll see it's a six page doc mm -hmm. file that has a statement of work as sort of like a few pages of that. Uh, it has a purchase order and it has a um, trade confirmation, I guess, right? So once I go ahead and click analyze on this particular document, it's going to get analyzed with the model. Uh, it's 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 the model. It's a different model, but it's, it was trained on the same exact same data set. It's not the AI show model, but it's the demo model. And you'll see that the result will come back with uh, both the classification of the documents as well as the page range of each of these documents. And so that's that's essentially what you can then use to then push. Uh, if, if, for example, the statement of work was was something that I was interested in, uh, I could use that uh, that page range to send the statement of work section of this document to the statement of work model for analysis. That's right, so that's really cool. Like, and I and and I know you're like, th that's really cool because it's not just it's not just a single document thing. It's like everyone smushed this stuff together and that would have totally messed everybody up in the previous setting. But now you can separate these documents and then do further work based upon that stuff too. Absolutely. And and, and it's not just recognizing that there's multiple documents uh, smushed together, right? It, it's also recognizing that there may be multiple instances of the same documents smushed together, right? So you might have like trade confirmation, you might have four pages of trade confirmations, but they're all one page documents. And so we'll be able to recognize that there's actually four instances of that same document. So that's also some of the, the capabilities within within the document classification model today. That's so cool. What, what else you got, my friend? All right. So so we looked at, uh, obviously, so the, uh, you know, the if you look at the result, it's telling you that we've got four pages of the SOW, a page of the PO, and a page of uh, trade confirmation. So, that, so that's classification in a nutshell, right? So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the other capabilities as well. And I'll start with, um, uh, with the... Um, with the query fields, right? Mm -hmm. um, so query fields is a gated feature. So, so if, if you want to use this, you obviously have to request access uh, and also make sure that the resource that you're using is in East US. So, so that's, those are the two limitations that you need to be aware of. Uh, so here's an example of, a, of uh, how I could use query fields, right? So uh, in this particular document, you can see that the, the general document model extracted a bunch of key value pairs, right? 
Uh, but hypothetically, I may be interested in looking at something really specific, like uh, maybe what are the notes due uh, in 2028? Uh, and the other thing that I could be looking for is like, what is the total number of outstanding shares, right? So those would be maybe fields that I'm interested in, in, in ex extracting for this particular document. So I go into the query field section and I add these two fields in, right? So I say, uh, you know, I want the percent notes ex notes due in 2028, uh, which is what uh, the, that area of the document might be. And then the number of stairs, shares outstanding, right? So those, those are the two things that I'm really interested in. And once I once I go ahead and analyze the document with this with these two fields, you'll see that in addition to the key value pairs that were extracted as part of the the model, we now have the new output of query fields. And query fields is going to tell me, uh, you know, based on the the questions that I'm asking of this document, it's going to tell me that uh, the number of shares outstanding is this uh, you know, seven billion whatever number, uh, and the percent notes due on 2020 in 2028 is 3.125 percent, which is essentially this this number back here. So again, that's the, the that's the capability of using your open AI to then extract this model based on the prompt that we're asking it for. And that's something that you can uh, you can send to the API as well. Do you have to use this this interface to do it? Is this APIable, so to speak? Oh, absolutely. So so everything within Form Recognizer is essentially an API. Um, the studio is essentially just a a demo that consumes that API. So, uh, so everything that I'm showing you here is completely automatable through the API. Uh, you know, this this is just essentially just a query string parameter that you add to the to the general document query to say that you want to use the premium query fields feature, and these are the fields that you want extracted as as part of that request. And that's a cool feature because if you're trying to look for specific things in documents and not just like like a text search, but a location, because I'm, I'm, is it give you location on the page as well? When you do that, it doesn't. It doesn't really give you location on the page as well because uh, essentially the, the model is just extracting these oh, values from, from the text, and so there's there's no location information being encoded as part of that that request. Uh, but that is something that that we continue to evaluate in terms of saying like how do we ground this better to 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 understand you know uh, what values are, are specifically being extracted and from which part of the document is it. But if that's a field that's generally being extracted, you could also look at the JSON and find where that field is too, ostensibly. Absolutely right. So, so in uh, you know, like just like you mentioned, right? So if you look at the results uh, from from this particular request, right? Uh, you have obviously all the content. You have the content organized by pages, and you have the content organized by words as well as lines. Uh, but in addition to that, you you have uh, you know the, the core things that, that you'd expect to see from from uh, from the API, which is key value pairs, which is essentially uh, the output from the general document model. And then there's also the output within the document section of the model. Uh, which contains the fields that, that I just defined, which are both the shares outstanding as well as the percent of notes due in 2028. So, so that's you, can sort of theory, you can, in theory, use your query fields to get the data you want and then go to the response to find where it is too. Oh, yes. Yeah. So 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 to answer your question, yes, absolutely. Right. So so I could go in here and I can search in the in the line section. I could search for, uh, you know, like if I were to search for uh, you know, whatever, 2028, maybe since uh, there, you can see that, you know, like it says that there's there's the, the notes due in 2028. And here's the polygon for where that that is represented within the, the, the span of text of this document. That that is amazing. We have time for just a couple of more features. Can you rapid fire show us a couple of cool things that you want to show us, and then uh, maybe we'll wrap it up. Absolutely. Let's 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 talk a little bit about the new uh, uh, pre-built models. Uh, in the in the pre-built models, we we now have a new pre-built model for the 1098 form. Uh, you know, uh, the the 1098 form is a typical tax form that most of us have to fill out uh, if you if you own a house and and there's mortgage payments that that you're dealing with. Uh, it also has a few different variants. You can see that there's a 1098E and there's a 1098T. Uh, so each of these are, are essentially models that, that you can now use within your um, within your document automation workflows. Uh, obviously, the, the 1098 form extracts both the, the year that, that this, this particular tax year that this particular document deals with and all the different fields that you need extracted as part of uh, sort of automation of this this tax form itself right so in conjunction with the the existing w2 model this might be something that you can start using as as as, as you know a tax processor or, or or somebody who's working with a lot of documents where uh say loans and, and things like that where, where it's financial services and, and this might be an example of how you can start using form recognizer capabilities to automate some of these document processing scenarios now is this a pdf or a, a picture 
Uh, this is a, I believe this is a picture. So, so this might be a picture that, that, that we're using, but it could also be a PDF, right? So in this That's case, cool. it's a PNG. I think it's harder if it's a PNG. It's a PNG. It's a PNG. Yeah, I see it now there over, over there to the left. It, it's almost harder to do with the, just a picture, which is, which is really cool. Yeah, so so we're able to extract uh, uh, content from from both images, which is PNGs, TIFFs, and things like that, as well as uh, PDFs. So those are all sort of like supported formats within Format Commander today. Amazing. And you mentioned something about language. Do you have anything to show us with language? Um, yeah, th definitely. So I mean, uh, some of the things that that you might uh, be aware of is uh, you know you can obviously work with uh, receipts in different languages. Um, I don't know if I have a quick sample here that is a different language, but uh, uh, maybe here's here's one this so so obviously we're able to extract uh, all, all the different fields that you typically extract from a receipt in receipts from, from different languages right so here's oh. a spanish receipt for example that, that has uh obviously the the line items uh you know who the merchant is merchant address as well as uh, some of the other fields like the totals and things like that so so again right um Typically, what what we recommend is customers just ignore the 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 language and just send us the document, and and we auto detect the language and 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 produce a response back. But you can also give us a hint by sending us a locale code or a language and locale code combination that says, you know, I'd like to see a Spanish response for right. for for this particular document. And the cool thing about these features is that they're, like there's such low hanging fruit of just features that will delight your customers in, in like such a nice way. Like don't type in the stuff from your receipt, take a picture of it and upload it. And that is sufficient for us, which is really cool. They're just little easy delighters that you can add to software literally right now. Absolutely. Right. And, and then, you know, the other thing is you're also seeing a lot of this go into uh, scenarios where, uh, you know, you might want to do expense reporting as an example. Right. Like so. So why would you want to, to go ahead and, and take all this uh, time to, to fill out like, uh, you know, what was the tax? What was the, the rate and, and, and things like that? So this this is all something that you can just automate without having to do a lot of that that grunt work for yourself. All right. Well, any other things you want to you want to show us? Uh, obviously, there's, there's a lot more that I can talk about, but, uh, you know, like some of the uh, other core sort of capabilities that, that you can you can also look at if you look at the, the what's new section on the on the website. Uh, so the docs have uh, an update that, that shows you what's new. Um, there's, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, there's language expansion for custom neural models. That's been something that a lot of customers have asked for. So, so if you want to train models in, in uh, different languages, that that's all that, that capability exists now. That's amazing. Uh, this has been been awesome, my friend. Here's a couple of links, by the way, if you want to know what form, Azure Form Recognizer is, you can go to this link right here. And what was that software that you were showing us? What was, what is that thing called? Uh, the software that I was showing like you. The, the, the UI that you were showing us. What is that thing? That's the Form Recognizer Studio, right? So, so the Form Recognizer Studio is where you want to go and essentially try out every single one of Form Recognizer capabilities. Um, like some of the things that I didn't show you today, for example, barcodes, right? So Form Recognizer now has the ability for you to recognize barcodes. Uh, those would be things that that you could use. Uh, you know, we, we also do a lot of, we've also done a lot of work with things like, uh, you know, detecting formulas in documents now. You can do that. Uh, you can do things like uh, recognizing annotations in documents. We also support high resolution documents. So, so there's a number of different updates that, that you should go check out if, you, if you're interested in, in, in exploring those. Well, this has been absolutely fantastic. For those, again, that want to know about Azure Form Recognizer, here's the link to go learn more on the documentation. And if you were excited by the tool that you just saw, Form Recognizer Studio, which Vinod has promised that is it's basically a wonderful skin over all API stuff that you can integrate into all of your software. This has been amazing, my friend. Thank you so much, Seth. Thanks for having me on and great to share the goodness of Form Recognizer. My pleasure. Thank you so much, uh, Vinod. And thank you so much for watching. We're learning all about the latest model updates in Azure Form Recognizer. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.